Nowhere in your journal do you ever mention anything about Mr. Alexander in this incident that you claim involving masturbatory conduct, correct? That's correct. Take a look at uh, Exhibit 463. This is a listing of telephone calls in, between you and Mr. Alexander, or from Mr. Alexander's telephone. Okay. I understand that those are not your own records, right? That's right. And uh, and so I, I don't expect you to vouch for the uh, authentication aspect of it, but. We did previously discuss the calls that were involved between you and Mr. Uh, Alexander, and uh, you indicated where that seems right. The calls that we previously discussed, they're on that sheet, correct? Um, not all of the calls, but yes. The call, Some are. All the calls that are there, ma'am, are the ones between you and him, correct? The ones highlighted are between him and I, yes. Right. There are other calls, but not between you and him, right? Yes. And the calls between you and him are the ones that you and I talked about and that you indicated that they seemed right, correct? They seem correct, that's right. And that sheet bears that out, correct? Yeah, the times are out of order, but I think... The times are out of order, and they're out of order because they're different switches that carried the calls, right? I don't know. But they are out of order, right? The, time aren't, the times are out of order, yes. Right, but... Um, in terms of the calls themselves, you, really, you know, we talked about you calling him at 3.53 p.m. You can find that on there, correct? Yes. There's a blue marking for those, right? Yes. So there's that call, right? Yes. And there is no other call on the 21st previous to 3.53 p.m. that you can see, right? You mean from me to him? Uh, right. Or from him to you, or from you to him. From me to him, I don't see any others before 3.53. Right. And the last call that was made by Mr. Alexander on that telephone talked about these calls was at 7 11 p.m. right there are no calls from his phone after that I don't see the one at 7 11 <laughs> the last call period that he made not just to you but to anybody Maybe oh on the 21st confusing. right to anybody okay that is the last call that he made, right? There may be others that called him, but that's the last call that he made. Oh, I didn't look at who was calling who. Um, it looks like this is the last call from his cell phone on the 22nd, uh, or 21st. 21st, my apologies. Ma'am, um, this issue involving uh, your allegation that, if I may have it back, your allegation that uh, Mr. Alexander was uh, engaging in masturbation while viewing uh, images of boys and girls, that was subject of a hearing back in August 8th of 2011, wasn't it? Um, I believe it was. Well, then let me show you Pardon a document me. to make sure that we're clear. And if I could have it certified. Now, take a look at Exhibit 464 and see if that refreshes your recollection as to the date of the hearing, which is on the upper right-hand corner, and then take a look at page 3 to see if that refreshes your recollection that there was a hearing involved. Yes, there's some language I don't understand, but I remember this. Right. That, that I'm just asking about the date. It was August 8th, correct? Yes. And during that, the purpose of that... That hearing involved at least an aspect of the allegation that Mr. Alexander had engaged in pedophilic conduct, right? Yes, Mr. The rule. You may answer, right? An aspect, yes. <laughs> and four days on August 4th, uh, before that, you tried to get somebody to lie at that hearing, didn't you? No. All right, let's, let me show you some documents. 
I want you to take a look at Exhibit 465. Judge, we're going to object at this point. <coughs> yes, you may have heard. Take a look at Exhibit 465. Let me see if you recognize it. I recognize it. Look, it's a magazine, isn't it? Yes. It's your magazine, correct? Yes. Sent to you, correct? Yes. In the mail, and you had it in your possession at one point, right? Yes. And you had it in your possession on August 4th, correct? Um, I think I did. Pardon? I think I did, yes. I go for the admission of exhibit number 465. No, Judge. 465 is admitted. Now, previously, you talked to us yesterday, um, Director Ken May, about being in jail and doing an interview with Inside Edition, correct? Yes. And in fact, you were in jail when you received this magazine, correct? Yes. It's addressed to you, correct? Yes. And with regard to this magazine, on August 4th, uh, isn't it true that an individual by the name of Ann Campbell came to visit you? Yes. And she came by and she started to visit. The visitation began at 1.36, but for you roughly around 1.30 in the afternoon, right? Yeah, it was in the afternoon. And that conversation between you and Ann Campbell lasted approximately an hour, correct? Um, it lasted a long time, from what I remember. And as part of the process, while you were there, um, one of the things that, or as, as part of the visitation, one of the things that you wanted to do was to give two magazines to Miss Campbell, correct? Yes. And the way it works is that before you give that magazine, it has to go through a guard so that they can give it out to the person, right? It has to go through a sergeant. Right. And in this case, this, that's what happened with this magazine, correct? Yeah, it goes through, I'm sorry, it goes through an officer, then a sergeant, then right. another officer. But you, and bottom line though, is you wanted to give this magazine to Ann Campbell, right? That one and another one. Right, the Star Magazine, correct? Yes, the Star. Well, let's look at the other magazine. Let's take a look at exhibit number 466. Is this the magazine that you <coughs> wanted to give to Ann Campbell? 466. Oh, um, that looks like it. Well, it's got your name and, and the address C, right? Uh, yes. And it is a Star Magazine, correct? Yes, that's the one. And this is the one that went along with the photography magazine, correct? Yes. I move the admission of exhibit 466. No objection. 466 is admitted. Exhibit 465 is called Digital Photo Pro in a magazine, correct? Yes. And you're, you, you previously indicated to us that you're very interested in photography and that sort of thing, right? I, yes, I was. And that uh, for many years prior to your arrest that you were involved in that sort of thing, right? Yes. You took photographs at weddings and all that and, and uh, other kinds of photographs, right? Yes. And here is the tag that's on there. It does have your name on there, right? Yes. Now, inside this magazine, on page six, we just look at it. leave the printed numbers to the side and the red numbers to the side, there is some writing in pencil. Can you see it? Yes. And can you tell us, if you can, what that says? Mark Stanick, 520-256-1178, ABC in parentheses. And you know who Mark Stanick is, right? Yes. Mark Stanick is a producer for, or at that time was a producer for ABC News, right? Yes. Well, I don't know if he was the producer at that time. But he had visited you on occasion, right? Um, yes, about four years ago. Right about the same time that this uh, was going on. Well, let me just show you exhibit number 467. Does that refresh your recollection as to when this individual from ABC was visiting you? Yes. And what dates did he visit you? July 8th, 2009, and September 17th, 2009. Okay. And that's the same individual that's mentioned there, right? 
Yes. You previously indicated to us that with regard to Inside Edition that they came to visit you and that you really didn't solicit them coming out to the jail to talk to you, right? That's right. And that you believe that the guard uh, pushed you into that interview, right? Inside Edition, yes. And who was that guard? What's that guard's name? I don't remember her name. It was five years ago almost. She didn't push me. She just encouraged me. Well, who was, what's the name of this person that encouraged you? I don't remember her name. They don't wear name tags very often. But with regard to the visit involving Mark Stanek with ABC News, she had nothing to do with that, right? No, nothing to do with that one. And you took his visit, right? Yes, I did. You can refuse a visit from anybody you want, correct? Yes. And you did not refuse his visit, right? That's right. Now, let's take a look at another page. Page 20. And there are some words there on page 20. And they're kind of hard to find, but they're in pencil, right? The writings? I haven't seen them. Those are in pencil, right? It looks like it, yes. Pardon? It looks like it, yes. Well, no, take a look at it. We want to make sure. Yes, it is. And where you are living currently, they do not allow pens, right? That's right. They only allow pencils, right? Yes. And on this page number 20, it says, read it for me. You testify so. Okay. Page 37. And you would agree that the one on page 20 is kind of hard to find. It's kind of right here near the, the spine of the book, right? It seems like it, yeah. Page 37. Has some more writing on it. See that right there? And again, if the glare is too much, let me know and I'll work at it. It looks like it said, oh, you want me to read it? I'm sorry. Yes, please. It looks like it says, we can fix this. We can fix this, right? Right. Page 40. has some more writing on it, and the lining's not so good, but it says, what does it say? Looks like it says, directly contradicts what I've been saying for over a year. Okay. And the publishing date on this item is August 2011, Page correct? 43. That's correct. Says what? It says you fucked up what you told my attorney the other the next day. Okay. And then page fifty four. Says Interview what? was excellent, must talk ASAP. And 56 says what? Get down here ASAP and see me before you talk to them again and before. Doesn't seem to make much sense, but let me mark an exhibit for you. Take a look at uh, Exhibit 468. This contains the pages and what was written on them, doesn't it? And if you need the book, let me know. Yes. Exhibit 468. 
approach. In summary, this is what uh, we've just covered, correct, in the magazine? That's correct. And this is addressed to you, correct? Yes. And the date? Can you see that February 6, 2012? I see July 25th, 2011 up in the corner and February 6, 2012 there. If we go to page 82, because if we look at uh, this exhibit number 468, what is written here doesn't seem to make sense, correct? Not a pan, no. But if we then go to exhibit 466, there are some numbers at the bottom of that, and they're in pencil, aren't they? Yes. And what are those numbers there? My understanding is that they're page numbers. I, that may be your understanding, but what are the numbers? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 43, 40, 56, 20, 37, 54. Okay. If we then arrange with exhibit 468, According to those numbers, ma'am, I want you to take a look at it again. 469. Does exhibit 469 have those statements in the order as set out in the Star Magazine? Yes. Your Honor. Overruled Exhibit 469 is admitted. Take a look at it. Read it, please. You fucked up. What you told my attorney next day directly contradicts what I've been saying for over a year. Get down here ASAP and see me before you talk to them again and before you testify so we can fix this. Interview was excellent, must talk ASAP. So ma'am, this was written in these two magazines four days, when you, when you attempted to transfer them, four days before a hearing on August 8th of 2011, correct? I don't know when they were written. Well, this magazine, the Star Magazine, as well as the, the Photography Magazine, you attempted to transfer those back on August 4th, four days before this hearing, right? Just the magazines, yes. And I know you keep saying just the magazines. The magazines have your name on them, correct? Yes, I'm only allowed to release my own property. Ma'am, I understand that, but those magazines have your name on them, right? Yes. And those magazines were in your possession on August 4th of 2011, right? Yes. And those magazines you had with you when you went to meet with Ann Campbell, right? Um, I brought them almost to the visit, but I, they don't go with me to see her. Excuse me? They don't go with me to see her. They get passed off to several different officers. I understand, but you brought them from your cell, correct? Yes. And you, at that point, at some point during the visit, requested that these magazines be given to Ann Campbell, right? Yes. These two magazines that we're talking about here, correct? Correct. And that was actually done. You And you're trying to tell us about the process. Why don't you tell us what the process is? The process is when you want to release property, you have to um, fill out a, a request. 
you have to state your request um, fairly specifically, what you're releasing, the title of what you're releasing. Um, at least those are the rules now. They've updated it. It was more generic then. And then it is given to an officer who inspects it and then gives it, when it passes inspection, it's given to a sergeant who approves it and then it's passed off to um, either, I think in, it's called, um, there's a control center. It's given to that officer and then it's given to a visitation officer. So when the visitor leaves, they pick up the property and go. And that's how this, and, and you attempted to use that process to get these magazines to Ann Campbell, right? Yes. And shortly before August 4th, do you know somebody by the name of Matthew McCartney? Yes, I do. Shortly before uh, uh, this August 4th date, and by shortly I mean within the month, you know that Mr. McCartney was interviewed by the prosecutor, right? Um, I think it was around that time. You were in contact with Mr. McCartney about the interview, right? In other words, you let him know that this interview with the prosecutor was going to take place, right? I think my attorney let him know. Well, isn't it true that in a telephone that you spoke with Mr. McCartney on the telephone about the requested interview by the prosecutor, Juan Martinez? I believe that is true. And that interview took place within approximately a month of this August 11th date of the hearing, right? I wasn't told when it was taking place, so I, but it was close to that time. And Mr. McCartney is the individual that you testified about previously with whom you had this relationship with, right? Yes. And he's somebody that you dated, what, in 2001? 2000 and 2001. And he's the individual that you said that, well, we kind of broke up because, well, why don't you tell us why you broke up with him, why you think you broke up with him? Um, because he cheated on me. And you're saying that he cheated on you with somebody named Brianna, right? Bianca. Bianca. And what happened with regard to that incident is that he cheated on you, you heard about it, and you heard about it while you were at work, right? Yes. Was this at the Purple Plum? This was at Applebee's. Applebee's. And you decided to drive about an hour and a half to confront Bianca, right? Yes. Because you needed to find out, right? I needed to know, yes. You needed to know. Isn't that sort of the same thing that you did with Mr. Alexander in August of 2007 when you saw him kissing with somebody that you went and you asked him about what was going on the night before because you needed to know, right? Yes. And so you went up to, was it Crater Lake? Yes. And you went up to Crater Lake, and this is the place where they have uh, people living in, in, in um, not subsidized housing, but housing that is provided by the employer, right? Yes, they're like dorms. And you were able to find where this Bianca was, right? Yes. How was it that you were able to find this Bianca if you had never had contact with her? I asked um, a mutual friend, and he told me what room she was in. So Which I went mutual friend did Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, so I just went and knocked on that door. Which mutual friend did you ask? I believe his name was Steve. And is this the individual that you said that acted really gay, right? Uh, he was gay, and he was acting very frantic. Right. And you indicated that when you came over there, he started to act really frantic, right? Yes. And he started to act really uh, frantic just at the sight of you, right? Um, I think because I was asking about Bianca, and he knew about the affair. Well, he saw you, and you started to talk to him, right? Yes. When you started to talk to him, did, t um, did you immediately indicate to him that you wanted to talk about Bianca? Not about, but to. So you indicated you wanted to talk to Bianca, right? Yes. And immediately, or shortly thereafter, he started to get all flustered, right? Would that be correct or not? Not when I saw him, but when I went to her room to knock. So you start talking to him about Bianca, and he tells you what place, the room she's staying in, right? Yes. And he goes with you, right? No, he told me the wrong room. He gave, initially, when you went to see him, he, he gave you the wrong room, right? Yes. And you went to that wrong room? <coughs> yes. And when you went to that wrong room, did you speak to the people there? I knocked, nobody answered. In the meantime, Steve had gone somewhere else, right? Yes. He had gone to where Bianca was, right? Yes. 
But you didn't tell Steve why you were there, right? Just that I wanted to talk to the uncle. Right, but you didn't tell him why you wanted to talk to her, right? No, not why. No. And it was kind of an unannounced visit, right? Yes. And so he took it upon himself without any prompting from you to give you the wrong place and then go and talk to Bianca, right? Yes. Oh. And then you went, and how was it that you were able to find Bianca's uh, room? I thought maybe I misheard him and transposed some numbers, so I went, I reversed two, the two last numbers. It was a three-digit three dorm, and I had the right floor, but I didn't. I just went to the opposite number. So, do you remember the number? No. So you went there, and uh, when you got to the door, you heard that there was talking inside, right? Yes. And there was talking inside. Would it be characterized as excited inside? Steve's voice, yes. Right, and this is the one that he was act. You said he was sort of acting gay over dramatic, right? Yes, dramatic. And you attributed that to the fact that he was gay, though, right? Um, it was a feminine tone, so yes. Well, no, I mean, part of what you told us before was that, well, he's kind of gay, and he's kind of that he way, gay. and so that he was being dramatic, right? He is gay, and he was acting dramatic. And, and that's what you told us, right? Yes. It could have also been that it's, it wasn't because he was gay, it was because he was concerned that you were there, that he was excited, right? Well, I never said that he was... Oh, world. You may answer. I never said he was acting that way because he's gay. I just said the tone of voice, I remember it because it was very feminine and very frantic, almost like a woman. But, but you're the one that brought up the fact that he was gay, right? Yes. And, and explaining this to us, right? Yeah, when I was describing it. Right. And so you were able to hear his voice through the door, right? Yes. And it was an excited tone. Yes. And that excited tone could be for a myriad of reasons, but one of them was that you were there unannounced, right? That's right. And, and it could be that he was, for whatever reason, excited or that non that term, he was excited that you were there, right? Again, it calls for speculation. We don't know why he's excited. Rephrase the question. He had his his demeanor when you arrived changed after you asked for Bianca, right? Um, I didn't notice it change. I just noticed it different after I went to look knock on her door. And his demeanor changed to the, the fact that he was more excited, for lack of a better term. Yes. Right? Frantic. And you began to knock on the door, right? Yes. Nobody answered, right? Um, no, they answered. Initially, right? Bianca answered. Oh, well, the no, first not door. Not initially. Do you mean the, the first the door? The second door. Didn't you say before that you went to that door, you knocked on that door, and nobody answered initially, you heard them talking? For a second before she came to the door, yeah. So, um, so you, you were there long enough to hear them excitedly talking, right? Not her, just him. And um, how long were you standing there before the door was open? I'd say five seconds or less. She opened the door, right? Yes. And did you recognize her? Well, you did recognize her from her photograph, right? It looked to be the same person. Right. And you began to talk to her, right? Yeah, I asked if she was Bianca. Right. You began to talk to her, right? Yes. And you started to talk to her, and you brought up the subject of Matt McCartney, right? Yes. She didn't bring it up, right? That's right. And you started to talk to her, and you started to ask her whether or not they had a relationship, right? Yes. And you were able to determine that they did, in fact, have a relationship, right? Yes. And you were able to determine that they, in fact, had been intimate, right? She indicated they had not had sex, but intimate somewhat, yes. And, ma'am, at that time, when this was going on, you weren't living with Mr. McCartney, right? No, I was you in had... Ashland. Pardon? I was in Ashland. And he was where? He lived at, well, he had moved away from Crater Lake. Um, he had lived at Crater Lake that summer, and now he moved back to Phoenix with his dad at that point. And, and, your, and your belief was that you and he were still boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, right? That was my belief. Actually, he may have had a different belief as you came to know later, right? Yes. He did not believe that you and he had a relationship, well, had a relationship, but were not boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, right? I don't know if that was his belief. Well, you, you've spoken to him about it, right? Yes. And um, based on your conversation, 
do you have a belief, don't you have a belief that at that time, he didn't think that you and he were boyfriend and girlfriend? Based on that conversation, my belief was that he knew he had Pardon? messed up, and he was very sorry for it. But how long did this conversation take with Bianca? Um, we actually sat and chit-chatted for about an hour. And this was at your request, right? Initially, yeah, I initiated the contact. And you can, and for an hour, you received information about what her relationship was with Mr. McCartney, right? He wasn't the whole conversation, but initially, you, yes. Well, you weren't there to visit with her because you'd driven an hour and a half, right? Can you say that again? Well, you weren't there just to chit-chat with her, right? That wasn't the, the point of the drive, no. I mean, you, you wanted to find out what the heck was going on with Mr. McCartney, right? Absolutely. And um, so it's, it's fair to say that this wasn't a situation where you were just sitting there chit-chatting about her job or anything like that. It was because you were interested in finding out what was going on, right? Yes. And you were satisfied after speaking to her for about an hour, what was going on? I was satisfied pretty early on. Um, Not just the hour. And in fact, isn't it true that you became a bit excited or upset during that conversation? Mm, no. At any time, did you uh, raise your voice to Bianca? Definitely not. I was in her home. And um, at, in this place, Crater Lake, it was what, an hour and a half from where you were living in Ashland, right? About 70 miles. But it's an hour and a half driving, right? I think so, yes, it's about an hour and a half. And then after that, where did you go? After that, I, it was very late. I didn't want to drive the hour and a half back because I'd fall asleep. Um, so I went and stayed at a mutual friend, in a mutual friend's dorm. There were two. And what's that friend's name? Eddie. Eddie what? Eddie, Eddie Lee. And how did you know Eddie Lee? I knew him because his parents also owned a restaurant in Wairika, as did my parents at that time. And how we old just, were you when this hap was happening? How old was I? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe I was, I just turned 21. And your parents still owned a restaurant, right? No, not at that time. <coughs> they had owned one up to how old were you when they I stopped? think I was 16 when they closed it the first time, 16 or 17. Right about the time you moved out of their home? Um, it was after they, I moved out after they closed it. And growing up, they had more than one restaurant though, right? Yes. And how many restaurants did your family have? Um, total that I know of. Six or seven. And growing up, there really wasn't any financial problems, was there? Early on, there was not. And early on, there were trips to Disneyland, for example, right? Yes, when I was very young. And uh, when you say very young, we're talking up to six, seven, or eight, right? Under 10. And during that time, it was what has been described as a, what you've described as an idyllic sort of um, environment, right? Yes, somewhat. Uh, and then at some point, the restaurant issues started, it, there became an issue with the restaurants, right? Yes, I believe, it, my understanding is it was an issue. And Mr. McCarty, where was he living at the time that you went to see Bianca? Um, he was living in Phoenix, Oregon with his dad. And he had a room there, correct? I believe he had his own room there, yes. And sometimes when Mr. McCartney, what town did he live in? Phoenix, Oregon. And after this conversation, you and he broke up, right? Yes, after he got back from Borrego Springs. Pardon? After he returned from Borrego Springs, that's where he was that night. Okay, he, he came up, and where, what town did you meet in? Phoenix, is that where you met? Yes. And that's when you decided to, that was the end of it, right? You decided that, right? Um, I don't remember, it was just a lot of tears, and it was obvious that the trust was gone, and there was not any kind of relationship anymore. And basically, that's the same reason why you and Mr. Uh, Alexander broke up, because according to you, the trust was gone, right? That's right. And so, after the trust is gone with Mr. McCartney, though, you still continue sort of seeing him, don't you? 
There were some blurred boundaries, but we were not boyfriend girlfriend. And in fact, you even stayed together uh, at Crater Lake or Ventana Inn uh, together after this, right? After you broke up, right? Um, we crashed in a tent for two weeks, but we were not together after at Ventana. Um, but you did have intercourse with him after this breakup, didn't you? Do you remember telling us that on direct yes, examination? Yes, one time. One time, but you did though, right? Yes. And he continued to did he continue to live at his parents' house? Um, he moved down to Ventana to find work also. He was looking for seasonal work. Right, and at Ventana, this is where they have the um, places to stay as part of the job, right? Yes, more employee housing. And where were you when he was at Ventana? I went to, I was hired at Ventana first, and then he applied for a job right after me, and he was hired also. And you and he were not sharing, were you sharing the same bed or not? Um, after I got housing, no, we were not. Right. Isn't it true that after you got housing, though, you would, when he wasn't around, go over to wherever he was staying and stay in his bed? He didn't have a bed. He lived in a tent. And no, that's not true. So um, how long did you continue to see him? Well, we were no longer romantic. We just hung out like more like friends. But you continue to be friends up to this day, though, haven't you? We've sort of lost contact, but yeah, we're still friends. And, well, you, you at least had contact with him uh, involving the uh, interview with the prosecutor, though, right? Um, I, I believe I did, but I know my attorneys did, for sure. I'm not interested in what your attorneys did. I'm interested in what you did. Isn't it true that you had contact with him, right? Yes. And when you made your trip down from um, Wairika to um, kill Mr. Alexander, you stopped in, Mon in the Monterey area, didn't you? I can't answer your question the way it's phrased. You didn't stop in the Monterey, didn't drive through the Monterey area? I did stop in the Monterey area. And one of the people that you saw in the area was Matthew McCartney, right? Yes. And did he live in Seaside then? I believe he lived in Pacific Grove. And that's the same Or Monterey. Area. I mean, the border is like, they were right next to each other. And so you actually stopped to see him back on June 3rd of 2008, right? Yes. And in fact, you spent the night with him June 2nd to the morning of June 3rd, right? Yes, I crashed on the floor. But you spent the night with him, right? Not with him, no. Okay, you spent the night at his apartment, right? Him and his roommate, yes. Okay, he, he and his roommate had an apartment. You spent the night there, correct? Um, it was like a house. I stayed the night there in the room that they shared. In the house, they had a room together, both of them, right? Yes. And you stayed in the same room with these two individuals, right? Yes, on the floor. All right. And the three of you were in the room, though, is the point then, right? Yes, when we slept, yes. And you... You guys went to sleep around midnight, and you got up at what time the next morning, which would have made it the third. What time did you get up? I don't know what time we went to sleep, and I woke up sometime in the morning. And did he go with you to see Mr. Brewer or not? No. And so you, after seeing him, though, there, you parted ways, and you left, right? And went to Salinas, right? Um, yes, I did. Yes, I went to Salinas. Pardon? I went to Salinas. And how far is Salinas from Pacific Grove, Seaside, Monterey, whatever the area is? How far is it? My recollection is that it's between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on the traffic. And you were going to, you were sort of detouring to Salinas for some cosmetic work, right? Well, I had to go to Salinas anyway to get on the road because I have to take Highway 1 south. I mean 101, excuse me, south. But you did go, to, when you went to Salinas, you did get some cosmetic work, right? Yes, my nails. Right, and you said it took a long time, right? Yes. And what kind of place was that in Salinas? It was at a strip mall, um, somewhat. What was the name of it? How about that? Oh, I don't know. It was one of those little operations where people are just coming and going. There was a long wait. And they only do nails, according to you there? It looked like they did pedicures also. I don't remember if there was hair or not, but just definitely nails and feet. 
but, but it could have been a place, a salon, where they also did hair, right? It might have been. And do you remember the name of this place at all? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go What time did you get to Salinas? I don't remember. And how long were you in Salinas? A few hours. I don't remember. I know that I wanted to get on the road, but... So what time did you get on the road? Uh, it was still light out, but I don't remember the time. This was after you had been over to Mr. Brewer's house, right? Yes. You were there for a time, and then you left Mr. Brewer's house, right? Yes. And then you went back to return something, right? I, yeah, if I remember from his recollection, I, rem I kind of remember it. Well, I, I'm not asking for his. I'm asking for your recollection. Do you remember coming back and giving him something? <coughs> I remember... I don't actually remember it. Then I don't want you to tell me if you don't remember anything. Yeah. Judge? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Monday, 10.30... Please remember the admonition. Have a nice weekend. You are excused. Right. Please be seated. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Ms. Erie, she may step down. Counsel, anything else for today? Thank you.